Could you tell the difference between a nickel and a dime from a hundred yards away? A dolphin can. Thanks to their secret weapon, echolocation. Toothed whales create a focused beam of high frequency clicks when they hunt. These high frequency sound waves move through the ocean in a narrow beam, sort of like the beam of a flashlight. When the sound waves hit an object, the echoes bounce back to the whale, just like the active sonar of a submarine. Echolocation allows toothed whales to detect prey hundreds of feet away, much further than they can see in dark murky water. This biosonar is so advanced that the US Navy has been studying it ever since the 1960s. A lot of that info is highly classified. The information that is publicly available is pretty damn impressive. The US Navy found that dolphins can detect an object as small as half a millimeter in diameter. That is roughly half the size of this little BB. Can you see that? Huh? <laughs> and they can tell if this BB was made of brass, aluminum, or stainless steel. They can even find a tiny piece of metal through two feet of mud. But how? I'm KP, a marine biologist who specializes in marine mammals. Let's answer the biological questions first. How do whales produce and detect these sounds? When we talk about whales, we're talking about several unique species in the Cetacea order. Within the Cetacea order are two suborders, Mysticeti and Odonticeti. These suborders use sound and perceive their surroundings in completely different ways. Mysticeti are baleen whales, like blue whales, humpback whales, and right whales. They produce low frequency sounds that are generally believed to be for communicative purposes. They don't echolocate or use their vocalizations for navigation, or more accurately, they physically can't echolocate because they don't have the same sophisticated auditory structures and organs that Odonticeti have. Odonticeti are toothed whales like beluga whales, sperm whales, porpoises, killer whales, and other dolphins who produce sound through a structure in their blowhole called the phonic lips dorsal bursae complex. Air pressure in the blowhole causes the phonic lips to Air pressure in the blowhole causes the phonic lips to slap each other like what happens when you let air out of a balloon. This slapping causes the oil-filled dorsal bursae to vibrate, and those vibrations are transferred to the melon, which is the fatty organ full of wax and lipids. The composition of wax and fat in the melon modulates and refracts sound like an acoustical lens. Even the skull of a dolphin is concave and specifically shaped to direct sound waves. Now when the sound waves bounce back off objects in the water, the echoes aren't heard through the whale's ears. Instead, the sound is received through their lower jaws that are hollow with fat-filled cavities. The lipids in these cavities transfer sound through the lower jaw to the middle ear, inner ear, and on to hearing centers in the brain. The information not only allows them to determine the size, shape, and direction of an object, but also the structure and composition as well. This works similar to an ultrasound. Now, if an orca used its echolocation on you, it would very likely see your skeleton, lungs, muscle tissue, scar tissue, and whether or not you've had any metal screws or plates put in from surgeries. There's even some evidence to suggest that they can tell when another animal is pregnant. This ability doesn't just allow the whales to locate an object, but identify it as well. This is really important because dolphins and whales are extremely picky eaters. For example, salmon makes up nearly 100% of the southern resident killer whale diet and Chinook salmon in particular. Chinook salmon make up 50% of their diet in the fall and 90% of their diet in the winter, 100% of their diet in the spring. And the reason why is actually pretty simple, calories. 100 grams of Chinook salmon has 231 kcals and 14 grams of fat. Now 100 grams of sockeye salmon has 156 kcals and six grams of fat. And 100 grams of coho salmon only has 139 kcals and just four grams of fat. So targeting Chinook salmon provides way more calories per fish than any other species and conserves a lot of energy because they don't need to hunt as many. Using echolocation, the southern residents can tell the difference between coho, sockeye, and Chinook salmon based on the salmon's swim bladder. Swim bladders are gas-filled organs that some fish use to maintain depth in the water column. 
The pocket of gas in the swim bladder strongly reflects the whale's sound waves, making it the perfect target for echolocation. The slab experiment conducted at the University of Washington is just one reason researchers are confident that killer whales can identify different species of salmon based on the acoustic signature of the swim bladder alone. The researchers placed sockeye, coho, and chinook salmon in a tank of water. These fish were all similar size and shape, but each species has a unique size, shape, and tilted angle of their swim bladder. Researchers aimed simulated orca echolocation clicks at the salmon and analyzed the returning echoes. The echo structure of each species were different and probably recognizable by foraging killer whales. Now this is very similar to how some populations of killer whales target the livers of sharks, which I talk about in this video right up here. These livers are packed with a calorie dense oil known as squalene. It is one of the densest sources of calories that you can find in the ocean. So when orcas echolocate on a shark, they can easily find its nutrient rich liver. They can see the indigestible cartilage and that is how they are capable of removing a shark's liver in such a precise way. The study also emphasized that although our results suggest that interspecies difference in echo structure exists in salmon, this type of information is probably not the only information used by an echolocating killer whale to detect localize and recognize Chinook salmon. Other possible cues include the swimming behavior, their depth in the water column, and even the habitat. Chinook salmon have been observed hiding in rocky crevices from foraging killer whales. So the whales may use echolocation to search out those habitats, bouncing their sound waves off the underwater topography. There are multiple types of killer whales and each orca ecotype specializes in a specific prey. Now this is where things get really interesting because unlike the southern resident killer whales, Biggs killer whales produce quieter and less variable echolocation clicks. Biggs also use echolocation 27 times less often than the residents. And that's because Biggs killer whales don't eat fish at all. They eat seals, sea lions, and other marine mammals who have far more acute hearing. Studies suggest that Biggs are trying to be stealthy and don't want to alert their prey. So they don't rely on echolocation and instead are more passive listeners. But let's talk about other toothed whales like sperm whales. It's a popular urban legend that a sperm whale's echolocation is so loud that it can turn humans inside out and that they use their powerful biosonar to debilitate their prey. This is where we again realize I should have named the channel Science Karen. Scientists deployed sound recording tags on the nose of a juvenile sperm whale. They found that the whales maintained a stable, long-range acoustic gaze, suggesting continual resource evaluation. Interestingly, another study found that when sperm whales close in on a target, they reduce the volume of their echolocation by orders of magnitude. Both studies concluded that the powerful sound-generating nasal complex of sperm whales enables long-range echolocation and prey selection, but not acoustic debilitation. One of the main takeaways from all of these studies is just how important sound is to a whale's survival. Unfortunately, the ocean is not a quiet place. Human-generated noise pollution from commercial shipping is quite literally putting the lives of whales and dolphins at risk. So how can we protect these incredible animals from anthropogenic noise pollution? That's a question that researchers and the US Navy are trying to answer. In the beginning of this video, I talked about how the Navy found that dolphins could locate a piece of metal through two feet of mud. That was part of a study done in conjunction with the University of Hawaii on how to improve mining and sonar techniques and make the oceans safer for marine mammals. There are also things that you and I can do. We can support laws and regulations that protect whales and dolphins, like the one that passed just last year in the state of Washington. It requires boats to stay at least 1,000 yards away from the southern resident killer whales, which is more than double the distance under previous state regulations. As the World Wildlife Federation put it, there are ways to safeguard nature from underwater noise pollution. We just need the political will. 